So after having the concept, I guess the the, uh, the next step is uh, cost estimate. Um, this is a preview looking forward to all the components needed to do a project such as um, converting a pontoon boat into a houseboat. Um, everything I can think of is possibly down here and uh, comes to a massive total of 26,800 um, way over budget. I can only really budget for 20,000. Uh, so moving into that, um, we had to work out uh, the weight justification for uh, the trailer to start with, which we've just completed that. Um, so we had to bring the trailer from uh, two ton maximum capacity uh, or below two ton maximum capacity up to 3000 ton maximum capacity um, with the increased load on the boat. Um, and then it's about the boat on the water as well, the load increase on that. So we've actually looked at putting in a third pontoon here, which is in hand at the moment. So we've done the volumetric calculations and uh, what it would mean to be to fit a third pontoon. Uh, the pontoons uh, come in 1200 uh, lengths and uh, they are 330 litre uh, vessels that are uh, all pods that bolt together um, with these measurements. Um, and then moving forward to where we are at this point in time, so actual costs um, on components purchased um, at this point, moving down, so the trailer's completed. We'll have a look at that shortly. Um, and other components purchased um, with a grand total of 8,000 at this point. Um, and I guess the important part is how is it going to all fit? So we've been through several different layouts. Uh, this is just a side profile. We, um, this back section here doesn't exist. Uh, the front section is slightly shorter, but we basically end up with a four meter cabin by two and a half meters wide uh, with a 1800 long section out the front where we would be steering the boat from. A roof section that runs the way through it is hinged here and a 2.5 meter veranda out the front which actually uh, hinges down to give us um, some uh, windbreak uh, when we're towing it with the car. There is a docking platform out the front. Um, and so then looking at the inside of the boat, how is this all going to fit? Uh, there were several different drawings on what it should look like. Um, but this is the one we're probably going to go with at this point. Uh, so you can see down the front, here's the steering console, the boarding platform out the front. So this will be all fenced off around the front there. Um, we've got the day bed out this side here, which you can sit three people on there or one person laying down drinking beer or a wine. Um, we've got a battery box at the back here. Um, the captain sits in here and then the solar is directly above the battery box feeding into there. We have a glass sliding door through here. So it's a solid wall on this side, solid wall on that side and a glass sliding door in between. We have a sofa bed here, which is a two and a half seater, which is a decent sized bed when it folds out uh, all the way across to the other side there. Just before the uh, entertainment um, bar, which will have um, the uh, sound system on and the TV and whatnot there. Um, fridge freezer alongside that, closed cabinet, um, and then the toilet shower, which is approximately uh, 900 by 800 uh, with a door opening here of 550 mils. Uh, glass sliding door across the back. And then the kitchenette benching along here, which is about two meters. Uh, this lounge is 1800 long. Um, and this is about two meters long. So there's 
There's another 200 mils of space in there that needs to be consumed one way or another. A rubbish bin or something like that. We have the back deck. The motor sits in here. Uh, the wash tub goes over the top of the motor, which is, um, I'll show you shortly, the Jilka. Um, and the back deck for boarding on and off the back way. Um, this is built at a, um, a, a schedule of one, one to uh, 25 mil uh, layout. Um, let's have a look at a few of the components that's been purchased so far. So we've got the XTM uh, 75 litre fridge freezer and the XTM 280 watt um, solar charger. Uh, we've got the Jilco Nomad tub and um, it's the hot water system and all the piping in there. We've got the portal loo, uh, we've got the control cables and steering cables to move the, the steering up the front uh, table and we've got the um, gazebo for onshore, we've got life jackets and ropes and chains and anchors and all sorts of stuff in that goody little box there. We've got the motor batteries and isolation switches and wiring in there for that. Um, the big one, my baby, a 200 amp hour Voltex uh, lithium ion phosphate battery, uh, which will be doing the job for the fridge freezer and the lighting in the, in the um, boat once we get to that point. Um, we'll just go out and have a look at uh, a few of the things. There's the lovely wife there, who's um, watering the dog. Hello dog. <laughs> uh, the back of the boat. So we stored the boat out here. Um, we've got uh, two 120 litre fuel tanks on the back. We've got a 70 horsepower Suzuki 2019. Uh, sits on the trailer. I'm going to take you around the front for that. Um, all the side work will be coming off today and the rest of the canopy. So from the first video, I've stripped down the front half of the boat and I've taken off the panel yesterday. Um, it was uh, heavily weathered. Um, so renewing all of this. Um, and since, since I've started uh, that, I've got the one new sheet in here. I'm going to take up the rest of the floor now. Um, in doing that, it allows me to actually put in the third pontoon down here. Um, so there'll be four sections, 1200 long, 330 litre uh, pods that bolt together. We'll be using these, uh, these stringers up here to bolt them to. Um, could weld them now I'm taking the floor off. We'll see what that leads us to at that point in time. So we've got to put the railings through and then bolt it to the railings. Um, that'll come all the way through from the motor pod way down the back there, all the way to the front, four sections. Uh, one of the sections will be a water tank. Uh, so we'll need extra strapping on that particular one. Uh, it may be in the middle of the boat. Um, that'll be used for the Jilka for showering when we're in salt water. The Jilko has a, a, a um, 12 volt pump that can pump directly from the body of water that you're sitting in. Uh, but only when it's fresh water, we don't want to pump salt water through the hot water system. Uh, so we just chew it out. Um, all the wiring has got to come out. Um, the flooring. Um, they had to be, all the screws had to be manually cut with a cold chisel. Um, they are just ridiculous. They will not budge. They strip their heads um, and I've got to drive a cold chisel in between here. It's all got to be done from underneath the boat. Um, and there's three lines of screws on each sheet and they're about um, 10 inches apart. There's a lot of hammering to go. Uh, but I am happy with the way the trailer has come up. 
um, with all the work we did to that. It's uh, an aluminium framework over the top of a mild steel, or was galvanized. Um, the back half was mild steel and another extension at some point, um, but we ground that all back and cleaned it up, put rust conversion on it, and then coal gel on top of that. Uh, we've got four wheel disc brakes now, um, and the brakes are driven by electric over hydraulic um, IQ7 Alco actuator, which is uh, driven from your normal control um, electric brake control in the car, um, wired through to a uh, Anderson plug for power. So there's actually a compressor in here, and the rest of it's by the seven pin DIN as per normal. Uh, up on top of the boat, uh, we are going to take steering console out today um, the captain's seat come out last night so that can just move uh, got to pull the wiring out and dismantle the steering and the throttle shift control there um, then I'll be taking all the rest of the railing off and the canopy pack the canopy up I may be using it on the roof later on um yeah so that's uh that's today's job a bit of a mission for me uh, but we'll get through it today and um we'll see you on the next video thank you